Hitting the open road in an RV or motorhome is an all-time favorite American pastime. Tracing routes to boom times of the 1950s, there are endless options to choose from for those looking to take their life on the road. However, not all American RVs and motorhomes are created equal. In fact, some are just plain stinkers, like these 10 all-time worst RVs and motorhomes. Before we dive deep on this subject, please be sure to click the subscribe button below so you stay up to date on the latest from Motor Rhythm. 1971 Chinook Concourse Chinook is a motorhome company that dates back to 1938 and Orange County, California. Once considered the sports car of motorhomes, Chinook made plenty of solid models over the years. But one to watch out for is the 1971 Concourse. This Class B plus RV was slotted between similar conversion van style motorhomes and the larger cab over Class C models. The big brother to smaller Toyota pop-up Chinooks, the innovative for the time Concourse had a spacious cabin with a fully equipped kitchen, a stove, a microwave, and Corian countertops, not to mention draperies, a space heater, and options like a TV antenna, air conditioning, and a luggage rack ladder. The chassis on these old Chinooks was sturdy, but the 360 cubic inch V8 under the hood and automatic transmission caused issues. For one thing, the big V8 was known to overheat on long trips and in the mountains, which is precisely what a motorhome owner would likely use their Chinook concourse for in the first place. Then there was the atrocious fuel economy economy that led to seemingly endless gas station stops. 1983 Winnebago Lasharo. If you've ever seen the 1984 cult classic film The Last Starfighter, you might be wondering if the 1983 Winnebago Lasharo was featured in the movie. That's because the dramatically raked styling appears to be 1980s space adventure inspired. It hasn't aged well and is certainly one reason to wonder about the Lasharo. Built in response to the oil crisis of the 1970s, the Lasharo was designed to be more fuel efficient than the typical 4 to 10 miles per gallon comparable motorhomes were achieving at the time. To that end, it was front-wheel drive, which was unusual for the time, and featured a lower height to keep weight down and help the Lasharo slice through the wind more efficiently than the blocky motorhomes from other manufacturers. But Winnebago built the Lasharo on a Renault traffic platform. This commercial vehicle chassis from Europe was never sold in America, which meant that breakdowns were hard to fix as parts were difficult to source. And although the 16 to 23 miles per gallon rating were solid, the engines were woefully underpowered. At first, the Lasharo came with a 2.1 liter diesel engine making just 57 horsepower was later upgraded to 75 horsepower thanks to turbocharging, but these wacky motorhomes will struggle to keep up the pace on the highway. 1963 Clark Cortez The Clark Cortez is a uniquely strange motorhome from the golden age of US RV manufacturing. Companies were willing to try just about anything, and in this case, that meant applying forklift technology to motorhomes. Clark Forklift Company out of Michigan decided to take their expertise in this warehouse implement and try it out on building RVs. The Cortez was the result, and it would become the first modern motorhome to feature front-wheel drive, just like the forklift. Also, just like the forklift was a simple design and compact size. Unlike typical period motorhomes that were built on heavy-duty truck chassis with giant-sized bodies, the Cortez sat low to the ground and measured in at just 18.5 feet long. However, another innovation that would lead to the short life of the Cortez was its unitized all-steel construction, resembling an armor truck, the Clark Cortez was certainly robust, but it was also extremely heavy, leading to terrible fuel economy and ponderous handling. Plus, the Chrysler Slant 6 under the hood, good for only 100 to 145 horsepower, wasn't potent enough to keep this heavy motorhome moving with ease. 1975 Winnebago Chieftain Winnebago is a name synonymous with American motorhomes, but models like the 1975 Chieftain have a nameplate the manufacturer would probably like to forget. It was certainly an impressive looking RV with symmetrically balanced lines, good for wheeling through lush fruited valleys of California in your splendid luxury hideaway. And on paper, the Chieftain was ready for anything thanks to its heavy-duty Dodge RM 400 chassis, 440 cubic inch Dodge V8 engine, three-speed automatic transmission, power brakes, and a 45-gallon gas tank. These Winnies also featured standard equipment like thermosteel construction, ashtrays, an eight cubic foot refrigerator, and a four-burner stove. But that monster V8 landed at a bad time, as Americans were in the throes of sky-high gas prices that left them looking for fuel efficiency, not gas guzzlers like the Chieftain. Owners also reported a variety of build quality and maintenance issues like problems with the parking brake, frame corrosion, and alignment issues. 
1964 Travco Motorhome. The big Travco Motorhome from 1964 came in 21, 22, 27, 29, and 32 foot lengths. Thanks to its sleek aerodynamic fiberglass body that had a distinct lozenge shape, capped by a jet age style tail lamps and fun bi-level paint design, the Travco earned nicknames from owners like Myrtle the Turtle. In the right shade of green, it's easy to see why. This Class A motorhome rode on a Dodge chassis and was originally marketed with help from Chrysler. Though the Detroit automaker ultimately had to ditch the RV business to focus on cars lest it go bankrupt, the Travco remained a popular vehicle, especially the 27-foot-long model. It was powered initially by a Chrysler 318-cubic-inch Polysphere V8 with a push-button-controlled automatic transmission. Later models would offer the hardier 440-cubic-inch big-block power plant, and in certain configurations like the Dodge Mahal, it could sleep up to 10 people. But the design would become dated by the 1970s and, more importantly, the Travco had problems with spare parts availability due to the chassis being discontinued. Plus, reliability was a known problem and owners reported issues with leaking body panels and poor build quality of components like the seats and floors. 1987 Fleetwood Bounder Instantly recognizable on American roads by the cartoon kangaroo bounding down the side, the 1987 Fleetwood Bounder is a luxury Class A motorhome with a 30-year history. Built until 1991, it boasted a notably aerodynamic front end and could be had in sizes ranging from 20.5 to 40 feet long. Loaded with features, the Bounder was known for its spacious cabins with plush comfort foam sofas, multiple bathrooms, soft-touch surfaces throughout, dual-side doors, and exterior awnings. Fleetwood wanted these 80s-era bounders to become a home away from home for owners, and it largely succeeded on the comfort front. It also gave the bounder a powerful 454 cubic inch Chevy V8, with options for diesel power plants as well. Unfortunately, the 1987 Fleetwood bounder would become known for poor build quality, leading to leaks from the roof, windows, and plumbing. The resultant damp interior was especially frightful in humid climates. 1967 Dodge Explorer Before Ray Frank started the Travco Motorhome Company, he was responsible for the Dodge Explorer RV lineup. This compact Class B motorhome was innovative for its size. Mr. Frank designed it with the aim of allowing owners to park the Explorer in a standard garage but still be able to stand up inside. Doing so involved removing the roof and rear end to be expanded with fiberglass and foam construction or fibra foam core in the parlance of the times. Period marketing suggested these explorers could double as a daily driver even while featuring a kitchen, bathroom, room for up to six people, and a six-foot-three bed. Some models even had drop floors to ensure a six-foot-high interior space. Riding on a Dodge van chassis, these explorers also featured a Dodge 360-cubic-inch V8 engine. Though innovative for the time, the Dodge Explorer motorhome was ultimately too cramped for regular long-term use. It was also known for having abysmal handling and being difficult to maneuver. Commonly reported mechanical issues included fuel gauges ceasing operation and problems with the engine shortly after purchase. 1970 Winnebago Brave Positioned as an entry-level motorhome for young families and newly minted retirees, the 1970 Winnebago Brave was offered in D18, D20, and D20T configuration, all of which related to the overall RV length, which maxed out at just under 21 feet long. Built on a Dodge chassis with a 318 cubic inch V8, the Brave featured a three-speed automatic transmission power steering, power brakes with front discs, and dual rear wheels. Looking like a giant box on wheels, Winnebago marketed it as a condominium that goes places. Not a very catchy phrase, but the Brave certainly looked the part. Features like shag carpeting, brown and yellow color schemes, and the huge W graphic running down the side make these instantly recognizable today. But that doesn't mean they're desirable due to a wide variety of issues, like unreliable powertrain that could only muster around 7 miles to the gallon, and and leaky body panels leading to long-term interior damage. 1973 GMC Motorhome When the GMC Motorhome arrived back in the 1970s, it had the distinction of being the only RV made by an automotive OEM. GMC handled the whole thing, design, engineering, and construction of its unimaginatively named motorhome. It was also remarkably innovative for the time by featuring a front-wheel drive configuration, much like the period Oldsmobile Tornado. Offered in 23 or 26-foot lengths, these big GMC motorhomes were relatively low profile. They featured a huge wraparound windshield, dual 25-gallon gas tanks, front disc brakes, drum brakes for all four wheels, and the strange styling that came from rear wheels being arranged in series with exposed 
closed frame cutouts. The 455 cubic inch Oldsmobile Rocket V8 provided ample power but terrible fuel economy. As well, the 1973 GMC Motorhome is best avoided because the long-term reliability of the front-wheel drive setup is not great and repairs are known to be costly. 1967 Winnebago F-17 The F-17 comes from the original series of mass-produced Winnebago motorhomes. Riding on a Ford P350 chassis, the F-17 was a compact RV. Powered by a Ford 300 cubic inch inline six paired with a three speed automatic transmission spinning the rear wheels. Gawky lines would come to define the Winnebago look of the time, along with comically tiny wheels. The F 17 was the smallest model in what would become a long line of Winnebago motorhomes and featured wildly colored shag carpeted interiors. However, these early Winnies were known for all manner of leaks and rattles due to quality control issues during the build process. Plus, a small fuel tank and underpowered engine meant that taking a fully loaded F-17 on a long highway trip was fraught with frustration. That wraps up our rundown on the worst American RVs and motorhomes in U.S. history. Please be sure to subscribe to Motor Rhythm below so you can stay up to date on the latest automotive news.